Hello, this is the Journey Toll Podcast, and I'm your host, Sean Zanotti. I believe life is about the journey, not the destination. To find the journey in every step of the road, the highs and lows, the twists and turns, the ups and downs. It's in that, it's in those moments that really makes life so beautiful. Our guest today has a journey of his own. Ryan Hope is an executive producer. He's an actor and activist. Please welcome Ryan to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Sean, for having me. Thank you for such a warm welcome. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love your last name, Hope there. You know, it's like Hope. You give people hope and that's your name. At the yeah, end of that the day. is my name. That is my name. And I'm, I'm constantly reminded that you know, sometimes that's the last thing that we come down to in life. We sometimes, all, that's all that we have. So it just is, is a constant reminder for when everything goes, you know, astray or awry, that we still always have a glimmer of hope. Mm, I love that. Um, you know, <laughs> touching on that, the first thing that just came to my mind when you just said that was, was COVID, because I mean, we're in the midst of COVID still. Here we are, what, a year and a half, almost two years in, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And we're getting numbers. The numbers are spiking up again. It's the talk of, you know, the talk of everything at the moment. How does that make you feel? What does that make you feel like? The, are you nervous? Are you not nervous? What is COVID? You know, what, what's the what's that situation like for you at this moment? I know. I'm like, girl, are we ever going to get up out of this thing? You know, as a matter of fact, I have um, a booster appointment set up tomorrow. I'm getting a booster and a flu shot. And I keep asking my family like, oh my God, am I going to be okay? You know, I'm, I'm doing a double whammy all in one. But I think the main thing is to stay prayed up. We're gonna still have to, you know, we're, we're gonna be in this for a while. Hopefully we'll be able to get ahead of the, uh, the variants so that we're, you know, we can get ahead of it. And we're not going to have to, you know, live to its mercy at some point, but for a while, I think we're going to be, for the next couple of years, we're going to be, we're going to be in this. So everybody's better buckle up and just, you know, do the best they can to, to protect themselves and others and, and get vaccinated. A little bit better though, this time around, meaning, I guess, <laughs> comparative to last year, because we've kind of, I don't want to say been there, done that, but yeah, we're, you're able to be vaccinated at this point. You're able to have some, do you feel that way or do you not? Are you, is it nervousness at this point for you or do, is it some somewhat of an ease or? Well, I look at the numbers and I see that even though, you know, the people that are vaccinated, the numbers are lower for them going into the hospital and being, you know, dying, um, I feel that it's probably going to be something that we're just going to have to equate to the flu, you know, like the, we get the flu every year, it comes around. So hopefully, you know, with us being vaccinated and staying vaccinated, our immunity will just keep us with just having either a common cold or something of that sort. So that's what I'm hopeful for, that it will just be another, you know, one of the cold and flus that we get that we'll have to learn to live with. Um, as, as, as long as we can, you know, just stay vaccinated. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I know that you work with the charity Trans Can Work, and mm -hmm. you are an advocate for trans. I also know that your friend, Dominique, was killed for being trans. My condolences to you. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us, if you don't mind, um, about what happened, and why is trans messaging so important to you? Sure. Well, you know, I, I identify with as being genderqueer. I use um, he, they pronouns. And I grew up being, you know, gay and queer and Black. And my best friend at the time when I met Dominique, I, I met them as my best gay friend. That was my best gay childhood friend. And, you know, we would look to all the different things that were on television and we didn't see any programming or representation that represented some of the, the things that we were going through in our own lives. A lot of the shows that we saw on television were very opulent and, you know, were very glossy and shiny and rich, you know, it was the housewives that were rich. And during that time, we couldn't marry as gay people. We, you know, we were in the entertainment industry, hungry for fame, hustling for money, and just hopeful to make it. And so we started to think about what we could do in terms of representation on TV. And so we started to put a show together that was on paper that we started to pitch around to different um, production companies and studios. And the note that we kept getting back was, 
Can you, you know, shoot a pilot, shoot a sizzle? Can you shoot something? So we started to, um, we gathered, I gathered some of my friends, got my camera guys together and we started to shoot our show. And it actually became a lot better than what we had ever even imagined. And mm -hmm. so, um, but one of the things that was happening on the show was my friend Dominique was starting to transition from male to female. I just thought that my friend was being a gay boy that was being extra. I didn't acknowledge the fact that my friend was, was transitioning. I had met my friend um, you know, at a continuum in their life where they weren't just a gay boy, they weren't, they were no longer just identifying as gay, that they were on a, a continuous journey of finding themselves and evolving into their true self. And so in my immaturity, I never fully acknowledged my friend who was transitioning. I always just said, oh girl, you know, when she wanted to take hormones or, you know, wanted to, um, you know, wear her hair longer or wear extra makeup. I mean, we always played in makeup together, but I mean, to the point where she was taking it, I just thought this is my gay friend just being super extra. And it wasn't until, you know, we had shot several episodes and um, she was documenting her life and be being very open and candid about it. And then during the height of our success on our show, she was brutally murdered in Fontana, California in her own home. And I felt so bad looking back at our footage because it wasn't until that point where I was sitting kind of by myself remembering her and I was now able to see who she had fully become right before my eyes, but I never acknowledged her transition or who she was as a woman um, during any of that process. And so um, I became very uh, adamant about finding different organizations to work with to um, help me learn and have the language and the tools and the resources to better understand um, the transgender community. And so I met Drian Juarez, who was the VP of programs at Trans Can Work. And I started to do different um, workshops and seminars with Trans Can Work. And I became very passionate about understanding the diversity that is within our own LGBTQIA umbrella. Wow. And so now that you're starting this work and you're involved with this work, what is the kind of what is the response that you're you're, you're receiving from the public? The response has been so positive because I think for me, after after Hollywood House Boys and my friends, my friend was murdered, I put the show down for several years and I, I went back to school. I, I graduated with my bachelor's, I moved to Atlanta, and I started to, you know, find my professional footing. And once my father passed, I came back to California to live with my mom. And I ended up a few years later at HBO. And in my first, like, few weeks at HBO, I got invited to um, um, one of their LGBTQ business resource group meetings called HBO Proud. And I remember sitting in that room and I saw the executives all the way down to the interns and they were just celebrating their, you know, their workforce. And I was like, wow, I have to be a part of this in any way, shape or form. I never, you know, I'd always been, you know, ashamed of being gay. And so finally to be in a place that was embracing their people, it was, it meant so much to me. And so I, I after that meeting, I reached out to, uh, the co-chairs at the time and asked them if they could, if they needed any help. And they said, um, yes, they were like, we need someone that could uh, do the community outreach. We're coming up on the 50th anniversary of, of LGBTQ pride. It's going to be a very busy time. And so I did all that I could to reach out to all the different nonprofit organizations, um, some that were bigger and some that were smaller that needed more visibility. And soon after that, they asked me if I would step up and be the co-chair of that organization. And as soon as I did that, I saw that I had a platform 
uh, to also talk about gender expansive, the gender expansive community, especially within HBO and that corporate structure. We had a lot of talent on our shows that were uh, in roles that were being written for um, transgender and non-binary characters, but it didn't reflect that necessarily on the inside of our you know, corporate walls. And so I called in different organizations like GLAD and Trans Can Work to do um, different lunch and learns. And one of the biggest things that I did recently with, with HBO is I had GLAD come in um, and do a 90 minute virtual learning session on you know, gender inclusive language and the gender expansive community uh, on our shows and in our workplace. And that was a big thing for me because I had to have a lot of major stakeholders within the company sign off on that. And we had everyone from HBO Max and HBO West Coast Production, East Coast Production, uh, Production HR and Legal in that virtual learning session. And it was a major move forward to actually start getting some um, internal change within our infrastructure. And it ended up being the impetus for our diversity, equity, and inclusion department to roll out another larger one, inviting me to moderate it for the entire enterprise. And then after that, they started to really um, roll out um, you know, different plans in terms of the insurance for the gender expansive community, um, just internal workflows and processes on the on the gender expansive community. So it really, you know, started to trigger um, a greater effect for our gender uh, expansive and non-binary folks. So it's been amazing. It's been amazing. I, I always say that, you know, for me, for someone who identifies as queer, um, being in this community and not knowing the diversity that was within it until mm -hmm. my, my friend Dominique was murdered. I'm of the community and had not been exposed. So what about others that aren't from the community and are not exposed? So I just want to try to find a way to uh, offer a safe space for people to learn and to understand about the ever evolving uh, LGBTQIA community. Oh, absolutely wonderful. Wow, just so impressive. Um, kudos to you and what you're doing as such a need. Um, that's just amazing. Um, I know that you are part of content um, that's entitled for, for the Hollywood, Holly, Hollywood House Boys. Um, tell us about that project. What can we expect with that? Ooh, well, you know, the Hollywood House Boys project has been a, when we talk about the journey, it has been an absolute journey. I started, Dominique and I started the Hollywood House Boys Project in 2010, 2010. And I think, you know, between 2010 and 2013 was when we were having some of our, our major success in, in terms of being independent, being an independent production company that was, you know, doing this on our own and shooting it on our own and funding it on our own, and then having outside companies starting to get, get gain interest and to contact us for meetings and to give us notes for then in 2013 for Dominique to be murdered, right? For that to happen, for me to put the show down, let the show go dark for years, and then to come back to the show. The thing for me was on Hollywood House Boys, there were some remarks that I had said about Dominique making fun of her, making fun of the trans community, telling her that she wasn't a real woman, misgendering her by putting her on a show called Hollywood House Boys when she, not, when she did not even identify as a boy or male anymore. So some of the guilt that I felt um, in my own heart, I knew that I needed to pick that show back up because as a content creator, you wanna be accountable and responsible for what you're putting out into this world. And I couldn't let my legacy live as it was. And so I came back to finish Hollywood House Boys in Dominique's honor, in honor of the trans community. And so when you, when you watch Hollywood House Boys now, you'll see, you know, we, we just finished um, an ep the, uh, four new episodes about a year ago, and you'll see us on a journey to learning on a journey to trying to understand and a journey to uh, offering a safe space to ourselves and our community 
for you know learning about the diversity within our community. So it was just an absolute blessing for for Francis Perdue, a friend that, of mine that uh, we've been, you know, she's a sister. We and her and I went to high school together. For her to be in a position in her life professionally to be the director of PR for Homestead Entertainment and to be able to get distribution for my project and for it now to be on Tubi and to also be able to show others, you know, I, I could be very critical of Hollywood Houseboys of some of the things that you, you'll see in the earlier parts of it, but in its totality, you'll see the growth in us and hopefully someone will be able to learn some of the do's and don'ts and not have to live with some of the mistakes that I made early on. That's so beautiful. You know, you mentioned something earlier that I wanted to circle back to. You said that you before, or, uh, previously, you would be embarrassed or you were, there was some fear there when speaking of being gay. What changed that for you? How did you uh, gain your confidence? How did you know, you know, how did this, how did you go from, because the person here that is an advocate, that is the voice, um, you know, how did you go from one extreme to the other? Hollywood Houseboy saved my life. I knew that I had a, a project that I was very passionate about where I wanted to be my true and authentic self. If I wanted to you know, have my gender representation, be a diva and be in makeup, I wanted to be able to bring that. If I wanted to be down and not have on any makeup, I wanted to just bring a 360 version of myself. And I knew that this was going to be something that actually you know, went into the world. And so I, I remember saying to myself, if there's anybody that I want to, um, you know, come out to. It is my mom. It is the person that has carried me for nine months. And the only thing that, you know, my family had heard was that gay was a choice. And I wanted to let my mother know that it's not a choice. Um, I, I, and the way that I came out to her was kind of funny because I'm the only person in my family that is left-handed. And everyone else in my family is right-handed. And so when I came out to my mom, I was telling her that, um, I said, remember when you know, I was a baby and y'all was y'all were teaching me how to write. And you would take, I would pick up my pen or the pencil in my left hand. And because y'all were teaching me how to write, you didn't know how to write left-handed. So they would take the pen and put it in my right hand to try to show me how to write because that was easier for them. I said, that's gay to me. Gay is, it was natural for me just as I was left-handed, it wasn't a choice. And so after I came out to my mother, that gave me the freedom to be who I was, to live and exist without shame and to be my true and authentic self. And so I felt like as long as my mother knows, I am, I am just, you know, I'm free to evolve and exist without the shame that I had previously felt. So I thank God for my mother. I thank God for a family that loves and supports and embraces me because we don't always get that in our community. Um, it's very hard being black and gay, especially in the black community for um, our black families to sometimes understand, you know, who we are when we have Christianity and the religion to think about when that comes into play. And so, um, especially in the transgender community, um, you know, a lot of the, the murder rate against black trans women is so high because a lot of their families put them out at an early age. Um, they're uh, forced to fend for themselves, live on their own, find their way, and that puts them more at risk. And so um, I'm very fortunate to have a family that loves and supports me and is, which in turn enables me just to, you know, to be who I, who I am. Well, and, and in turn, truthfully, then that's that's it. That's the foundation there. So the love that you're getting from them, you're able to, to then give it back to other people. That That's Amen. it right there. That's your core. Amen. Amen, Sean. So you were just honored by Warner Media with the Richard D. Parsons Award for your volunteer work uh, in the community. And I know you were also interviewed on CNN. How did that feel? Oh my goodness, that felt like a, a 360 degree moment. It felt, you know, when I started this journey of Hollywood House Boys and our, you know, just a journey for us to have our own stories out there in this world and to see after, you know, 
10 years later for Hollywood House Boys to finally be on a platform that's visible to the world. And also me simultaneously working inside of HBO and trying to bring in you know, new resources and being a resource to the company. Um, it just felt really awesome when my boss said, hey, you know, there's an, there's an award that comes around annually. It's called the Richard D. Parsons Impact Award. It's HBO and Warner Media's highest honor. Can I nominate you for this? Can I please nominate you for this? And at first I was, so, I was very proud that, you know, and very excited, but I also knew that it was going to be a lot of work um, for the, for the nomination process, because there's a lot of paperwork that you have to fill out. And at that time we were honestly, we were really, really slammed with a lot of the shows and stuff that were going on internally. So I was excited, but I was also like, oh child, like I just, I can't take on another project right now. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad that we, we went through with the process and for me to find out that, you know, I had won. It all just really, you know, it wasn't until that moment that I was able to see the journey, that I was able to see the journey in its totality and to finally be recognized amongst my peers, uh, amongst my uh, supervisors and my, my direct, direct reports. And then to find out that I was going to be interviewed by C CNN's Don Lemon and to get on that interview and to speak with him and for Don to also say to me, Ryan, oh my God, like I also as a black gay man do not understand the diversity that's within our own community. Can you mm -hmm. also like reach out to me after this and can we offline and further this conversation? And so mm -hmm. Don Lemon and I are you know, now sidebarring and I'm able to help offer and bring resources to, to, to others in this way as well. So it's been such a blessing, such a blessing. Oh my gosh. You know what? The, the beauty, you don't even see it because you're just, I can just see your, your heart is just giving because even when you just shared that story with your boss coming to you, you thought your focus was not on you getting the accolade. Your focus was, oh, it's going to take all this work, you know, and so at the end of the day, this is just your heart. It's just your passion. And um, I think it's just really just who you are. And so when you're able to just continue, when you find your passion and your purpose and you're consistently, that's, you know, the core of that is giving, then it's just going to keep coming back to you consistently. And, and you're, you're, you know, and then the end of the day, you're, you're saying the right thing is you're saying you're grateful. So you're, you have a grateful heart. Uh, what do you do? How do you, uh, what is your, your practices? Are you, are you, are you spiritual? How do you keep your heart grateful? Uh, yes, I'm very spiritual. I'm, I'm so very spiritual. Um, I practice gratitude each and every day. I come from a praying family and I just don't take anything for granted. I don't take anything for granted. And I just try to put into this world everything that I would want out of this world. I am at an intersectionality in life that makes me see things a little bit differently um, as well as everyone is. And so the diversity within our world, the diversity within humanity is means so much to me. And so my fight is for, you know, the representation of different voices to be told, to have those stories told. And that's why I wanna work in this industry to be able to share those stories with this world. And so that's what keeps me going each and every day. You're crying right now. Tell me why you're crying. <laughs> oh, because I, you know, sometimes like, I don't, like you just said to me, um, I didn't recognize that, hmm. you know, someone was trying to recognize me because I was just, it's just the work that I have been, been doing. And you're just in your flow, it's in your flow. It was, I was just so passionate about, you know, just the work that it, I wasn't trying to be recognized for it in that way. I was just doing it because it meant so much to me, especially to keep my friend's name alive. So my motive was always just, you know, to bring greater visibility in her honor. And uh, I didn't in turn necessarily want to be honored, but it was, you know, it's been beautiful that um, someone took the time to, to honor me, so. And it's, it's well-deserved. I mean, clearly, I mean, clearly it's well-deserved. It's well-deserved. Um, I think that sometimes, sometimes it's difficult to be able to get the pat in the back um, because 
not that you don't feel deserving, but I think that what it may be is just that, yes, you are, you are in tunnel vision and your, your vision is just help. And to, mm-hmm. and to, and you're moving in that, in that, in that space. And the, the motive for you is not to get the accolade. And I think when you continue to move in that, in that space, for that reason, you will consistently continue to get blessed. So I just, I'm so excited to just see, not even, of course you're blessed now, but I'm anxious to see what even more is, you know, is still to come that mm-hmm. God is going to continue to bless you with. Oh, thank you, Sean. I mean that wholeheartedly. What is some advice? So advice um, that you could give a a listener or a viewer out there right now, uh, an actor. Um, what would you say? Uh, what's some advice you would give them? Three tips that you would give an, an actor. I would give in your space that you an actor in my space. I would say that um, be open to creating your own opportunities. I think that we live in a world now where everything does not have to be um, us being on in a blockbuster film. We don't always have to want to be in the number one biggest box office number. There are audiences and opportunities everywhere. And if there are not, then you can create your own. Um, I would also say to never give up never give up. If I would have known that now that it would have taken me 10 years to get distribution for Hollywood Houseboys, I mean, 10 years for a project. And I'm sure that there are other people that have had, you know, it has taken them longer in life to have, you know, things happen, but we never gave up. And I'm so happy that my mom and my family always told me to keep going and that they supported me um, you know, through everything that I've been doing. So, so, so yes, um, I don't know if that was three, but I would just, you know, the biggest thing is to never give up and to keep on going and you'll find, you'll, you'll get your breaks here and there and you never know what opportunity is right around the corner coming for you. What are your spiritual, are you spiritual? Do you have any spiritual practices? I'm very spiritual. I wake up every day uh, thanking God for, you know, being able to use all of my physicalities and my abilities, because without that, you know, I'm not able to, you know, to take on anything else in life. So I'm, I'm, I wake up grateful. I practice gratitude each and every moment, each with each and every breath. You know, I'm thankful for the smallest things, because when you're thankful for the smallest things, the bigger things will come and, you know, mean even more. Um, and also, you know, I, I, I'm very, uh, I work with the Reiki and I practice different, you know, techniques with crystals and energy healing and, uh, energy alignment to make sure that I can go out and, and face this world and bring, you know, the, the, my best self forward and also cleansing my own energy. And sometimes when you go out and, you know, you come across negativity or each and every day, there's just a lot of energy in this world to be able to clear that energy and clear that energy around you and, you know, release that. So um, those are my, my spiritual, you know, some of my spiritual things and techniques that I do, but definitely practicing gratitude each and every single day. What's next? What's next for you? Oh, I am so excited about what's next. I I can't say a lot about it, but I'm in a position now with the company that I work for and having a mentor within that company that's, um, that is a huge executive producer on a huge HBO show that has been mentoring me. And I've been working and developing on, um, this producer has, uh, uh, has started their own LGBTQ production company. And I've been creating and working on a concept that I think is going to be a game changer. And so, and yes, and so I'm so excited. I've been working on it for over nine months and um, I'm just so looking forward to being able to use the resources that I have now around me because God has put me in a greater position with greater resources. And so I just hope that I'm able to make a greater impact. 
Oh, wow. I'm excited to know what that project is about. And you knew how to talk around it too. And not give, get, not going to give me the details, but give me yeah. just enough. That was a great tease. <laughs> Hopefully I can come back again when that please, project is please ready. Please do. And Absolutely. tell you about the, the journey of getting there and getting, getting that Yes. <laughs> yes. You have, listen, do know you have a permanent position, place, here on the journey told. Oh, Seriously. Um, I mean that. And when you're here in LA or when you have a second, I'd love for you to come by the studio and come in studio as well too. I would love that. That would be amazing. Um, I want you to finish this sentence for me. I am a. I am a hopeful. Ooh, and a master of. I am a master of creating my own destiny. Mm, who can control everything in life. Okay. Okay. There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I would like to wrap up with a segment that I call tell and tell, which is a play on the word show and tell. What is something that you can tell us, tell the audience about yourself that you have not shared with anyone before? A secret, if you will, about yourself. Oh, a secret about myself. I would say one of my biggest secrets is that I'm very insecure. I am so insecure. Yes. I, you know, and Insecure is one of my favorite shows. Me um, too. On HBO. <laughs> and it's, it's one of the shows that I also cover there. But um, yes, I am, I am the, the, the male uh, genderqueer version of Issa Rae's character on Insecure. Okay. Is that your, do you watch the show often? Every, uh, every, I mean, is that your, is that your show, your favorite that's, show? That's my zhuzh, yes. That's your jam, okay. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> what did you say, your what? What was that word? My, my zhuzh. My zhuzh, ooh, that's, okay. Yeah, that's, that's a Wendy Williams, um, I, that's, I owe that to Wendy Williams, she's, you know, that's one of her words that I oh. use. Oh, I like that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna add that to my little my little calf. <laughs> and I'll and I'll give you the attribute. <laughs> Moving forward. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you. That was just absolutely amazing. Um, if someone wants to follow you on your journey, how can they go about doing that? Sure, they can follow me on IG at a glimmer of Ryan Hope. Okay. Well, thank you, Ryan. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for, for, you know, sharing your light with the world. Thank you for being an advocate. Uh, thank you for being a voice for the voiceless and, um, you know, continuing to march with all of this, the, the power that you have and doing so with ease the way that you're doing it, because it's absolutely amazing. You're just rumbling there. So just keep on keeping on. Keep Thank on keeping so on. Much, Sean. Thank you so much. Oh, and everybody, please watch Hollywood House Boys on Tubi. Hollywood House Boys on Tubi. We'll be watching. Alrighty. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sean. Well, Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> you as well. Well, that is it for this episode of the Journey Told Show. I'm going to leave you with words that my father would so often say to me, and that's to be the best version of you that you can be. Until next time, folks, let that sizzle in your spirit.